All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at the GeekCon conference, and I am joined by Charles Nutter. Hey, how's it going? Probably best known for all your contributions to JRuby. That's You're right. Man. Proudly representing. And um, also, you, you do a lot of work on the kind of JVM level, internals, optimization, all that stuff. Um, so I thought your talk was particularly interesting, talking about how you can accelerate your Java code to be close to C performance by making it look quite horrible. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, over the years working on JRuby, we've, we've had to investigate really low level performance things, like actually looking at the code the JVM generates. And my talk, I want to kind of show how you can do that too and learn from it. Cool. And that's, I mean, for normal Java developers, you don't perhaps need as much optimization, but it's good to know the techniques and um, how you could actually dig in and look at the bytecode and figure out what's going on to improve your performance. Right, exactly. So I've got um, a little example I wanted to walk through. One of the tools that people are using and that I've used, uh, it's called JITWatch. And uh, I'm just going to run some code through it, show you how you can actually get some deeper information about the JVM. Nice. All right, so I'm going to switch to your desktop here. OK. Um, now we're looking at some very large presenter fonts. You normally code with fonts this large? No, thankfully, not yet. <laughs> but probably, probably in the next few years, I'll be up to it. Um, so this is obviously just a, a trivial example here. Just going to loop 10, 000, or 100,000 times calling this method that's going to do a hello world, essentially. Um, and the, the number is important here, the 100,000. Uh, the JVM generally will not JIT methods until it gets to at least 10,000 calls. And there's different, different levels of it, but 10,000 is the usual metric. Um, so this benchmark should run 100,000 loops, should end up compiling this stuff, and ideally we'll see some inlining and, and some uh, JVM optimization happening. Um, if I just run this normally here, of course we just get a bunch of hello, hello JVM output. Yep. Very simple. Uh, now, where it starts to get interesting is if you throw in some of these additional JVM flags. Uh, we unlock the diagnostic options with one flag, and then I'm turning on two here, print compilation and print inlining. Uh, this will actually show what's happening at the JVM level, when it's compiling these methods down, uh, how it's deciding to inline them, and, and whether, whether that's working out the way you want it to. I also pass xbatch here, which makes the JVM not do a lot of this in parallel. It can kind of end up interleaving output and looking a little weird. Okay. Um, so if we run this now, and I'm piping uh, standard error to dev null. In the code here, I did standard error so I could still see the compilation and inlining output. And we get a lot of code. Uh, a lot of stuff inlines up here that's not even related to our code. The JVM itself actually has code that gets hot during this short run. Uh, but then we can see we've got our com headius hello method is right here that is actually being compiled. We've got our com headius the main method. And we can see the actual inlining graph here. It inlines hello, which inlines print line, which inlines print all the way down. Uh, and then eventually we get messages like this. We've gotten to a point where the code's too big. The JVM will stop inlining at that point. Yeah. And these are the sort of things that can give you information about whether the JVM's optimizing stuff the way you want it to. Uh, if we go a little further, go a little deeper here, a uh, whole bunch of flags added now. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of JVM flags. This is all sorts of, all sorts of JVM flag magic. Uh, most of these are documented in the JITWatch tool, that this is the set of flags you need, throw them onto your command line, and you'll get the information out you need. Log compilation uh, basically does print compilation plus print inlining in one large file, uh, a little bit easier to analyze than this output. Uh, print assembly uh, via a, a plugin that you can install in the JVM will actually dump out assembly for each of the methods that are being compiled. Uh, I'm also uh, using an option here to change it to Intel formatting. The JITWatch tool wants that. And a few other things to just make the output a little bit more uh, toolable, a little bit easier to analyze. Uh, cool. Finally, so dumping it to a hotspot.log so file. So is this output something we're actually going to be able to understand? Definitely not. Uh, I'm actually going to show that here. Uh, the hotspot.log file ends up being a really horrendous pseudo XML form wow. here. So let's go all the way down. We can see we've got all these classes being loaded. There's our assembly code. Um, I think back up here, we had some of the nasty XML that comes out. So yeah, it's not something that you actually want to look at. And this is where a tool like JITWatch can come in. Yeah. JITWatch can take this file, this output format, and 
basically give you a nice GUI way to look through it and browse your system, see the methods that are compiling, whether they're inlining, what the assembly looks like. Um, I've already got the package uh, checked out here. It's from the Adopt OpenJDK uh, Git, GitHub organization. It's just called JitWatch there. Clone it, you're going to run this, and then it will bring up a, a GUI that lets you look at that output format, the log compilation format. All right, so here we go. Um, I've already got this configured so it knows where the source for my code is and where the classes are. Uh, if you don't put that in, it has some trouble locating things. So we'll open up the log file I've just created for Hello World and tell it to do its analysis. And so after that, it can see all of the methods that have been compiled. There's a bunch in core Java, a bunch in the Sun package. Mm -hmm. uh, and then com hedius hello is also here. And we can see the methods that have actually gotten compiled. Um, we'll take a look at main first. If we show the try view, which is the cool part of wow. JitWatch, now we actually can see the original source of our code. We can see the bytecode that goes along with it. And we can see the assembly that's been output by the JIT. So you can even click on lines and see straight through which bytecode goes along with this line of code, what the assembly looks like, and then start to figure out if there's any problems at that level, if there's things you're doing that make it difficult for the JIT to optimize. Nice. Yeah, so this is a lot more legible than the humongous XML. Right, exactly. Taking that XML and turning it into a nice form you can actually browse through here. Um, what I want to talk about in my, my talk tomorrow here at Geek Out uh, is once you've got this information and you're using these tools to analyze the code and analyze the JIT, how do you find problems? What, is, what do the assembly lines mean here? Uh, most of the folks here, some of these will be easy, moves and increments and adds and yeah. whatnot. Uh, but a lot of them, they're going to be unusual pieces of code. I want to kind of walk people through what you see coming out of the JVM, how to understand what it's doing and what the problems might be with it. Nice. And this is also, I can appreciate this is a nice JavaFX user interface. For oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so as a client guy, that makes me quite happy to see JavaFX being used for real developer tooling. Yep, being used for a very nice purpose. Yeah, this is a lot better. Um, like a few months ago, I was trying to optimize the, um, there's a um, Nintendo, an NES emulator called oh, Half yeah. NES. Um, and the performance is quite bad on embedded processors like Raspberry Pi. Mm. So I spent a lot of time looking at the, the inlining output to improve performance because especially on small embedded processors, um, every method call just destroys your performance, especially in tight loops where it's, it's essentially emulating a, a really old processor. So it has to go step by step through each scan line um, just like it's processing it on the um, old hardware. So you have a much faster right. chip but the permutations you have to go to emulate the old hardware are quite obnoxious. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's a great this example. Is actually, I'll try this on the um, half NES optimizations I'm working on for my Absolutely. book. It should be a good tool for that. Yeah, we've used this, uh, we've used not, not this tool. This is a newer one, but back when I was doing a lot of deeper optimization on JRuby, uh, we use log compilation. There's another command line version of this tool called log C that's part of OpenJDK. Gives you that command line output a little bit nicer. But we found serious performance issues within JRuby that they, they were kind of the death of a thousand cuts. You'd never see these in a typical profiler. Once you look down at the assembly, you can actually see that you're doing something at a processor level that's destroying performance. Then you can make some fixes. And we've had a number of those cases. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, what, what other sort of tooling do you use on JRuby? So you use JitWatch. We use JitWatch. Um, we've used some of the, the Java performance harnesses like JMH, the Java measurement harness. Um, we've used various profilers, too. Uh, you know, in general, when I talk about performance optimization at this level, mm -hmm. I also have to say that there's, there's other things that are most likely your performance issue. Too much allocation, too many JNI calls, uh, GC pauses getting in the way. So this comes up after you've worked on that. We've did a lot of profiling with just standard uh, allocation monitoring, GC monitoring. Once you get past that, it looks like your allocation rates are OK. Maybe this is the next level that you need to go to to find the next performance issue. Cool. All right. Now, this is really great. Um, thanks for showing some of the detailed tooling which you used to, to make the JRuby code better. And I'm looking forward to your, to your session tomorrow as well. Um, for folks at the local conference here, I think you're the first session of the day. Yes, first session of the day in room two, I believe. 9.30, yep. And so. um, thank you very much for coming on the Night Hacking All right. live stream again. It's always fun. Thanks a lot. So for folks watching the program locally here, 
Um, you can go to the URL there, nighthacking.com, and watch all the videos. Um, and then folks who are on the online stream, um, the at height, night hacking Twitter handle, at underscore night hacking, is where you can get announcements about our show schedule. So tomorrow we have, I believe, four or five um, interviews during the day with different cool. folks, um, you know, similarly geeky technical content like this. So it should be a lot of fun. So thank you guys very much for listening to the first Night Hacking interview at the Geek Out conference.